What's up, wrestling fans? It's the Emerald Enthusiast of the Multiverse Musings Podcast Network. Here with a look at the Mattel Ultimate Edition Target exclusive figure of Batista. So this is a superb figure. I can see why everyone is after this figure right now. Just look at the plethora of accessories that you can see through the front window. So with no further ado, let's take a look at the package details now. Here is a studio shot of Batista on one side. On the bottom, we get product information. Here is the WWE Legends logo. On the side, it says Batista. On the top, not too much. There is the Ultimate Edition logo, and again, it says Batista. On the back, we get a really excellent product shot of Batista, as well as an action shot on the bottom. On the back, we get a brief bio. It says that Batista is six foot six from Washington, D.C. The finisher is the Batista Bomb, and career highlight, he was the World Heavyweight Champion. And here is the write-up. It says, 318 pounds of raw power and pure intimidation. Nobody was more feared than the animal. Just ask his evolution stablemate, Triple H. After Batista ran roughshod through 29 other men at the Royal Rumble, the game went from thumbs up to thumbs down, leading to Batista's WrestleMania World Heavyweight Championship victory. In terms of the front of the packaging, I like the Ultimate Edition logo here. The coloring is good. I like the font that they used for Batista's name here. I think the overall shape of the packaging is pleasant. My only criticism is I feel like the figure should be in the center here with the accessories positioned around it. But now I think it's time to bust this figure out of the package and see what's inside. Here's the figure free of the outer packaging, but still in the inner plastic. And here we have the animal out of the package and ready to rumble. I continue to be impressed by the Ultimate Edition figures. They are an upgrade over the WWE Elite figures. And Batista fans should be overjoyed with this figure. There is just so much to like here. So let's go ahead and get a closer look at the loose details now. Let's take a look at this myriad of accessories here. First of all, we get this pair of fists. Those look really good. And of course they have the hinge. Get this t-shirt that says the animal. And that looks like it won't be too difficult to get it on the figure. Get a pair of open hands here. And that looks like they could be for holding these little clipboards over here. Which by the way, I'm thoroughly impressed with these. Hopefully I can get a good shot here. One of these actually says John Cena, and the other says Triple H. You can even see the WrestleMania logos there. That is very impressive. That level of attention to detail is amazing. So just an excellent job there by Mattel. We get a pair of these hands with the thumb raised, like you know he can point to himself, you know. The give me what I want type of thing. It's all about me. That era of, you know, Batista's character development. So I like the thumb pointing hands a lot. Here is the world title belt. And for the most part, I do like this. I like how shiny the plastic is. It does look like metal, but I feel like the, the lettering on the belt is just a little vague. I mean, you can still see that it says World Heavyweight Wrestling Champion, but I feel like the lettering could, could have been a little bit more pronounced. So that is slightly disappointing, but I still like this accessory. There is the screaming head sculpt, and that certainly looks like Batista. Gotta say, that's some really good work by Mattel there. But this one is my favorite one. So I am going to display the figure with this head sculpt because <laughs> this smile, <laughs> this is just gold. It's like this kind of smarmy smile. Uh, I like it. like it a lot. They did just a great job at capturing the way he smiles and the eyes. 
look really good on this. The sculpting's amazing. The hair might be just a little plastic looking, but the skin tone looks good. So yeah, thoroughly impressed with all that we get for the purchase price here. Let's look at the lower body here, and this is very impressive work by Mattel. The paint applications are outstanding. We get the midfoot hinge here, so that's impressive. Articulation at the ankle. I like the way that the boots have been sculpted here. It's like you see these little snaps that have been painted silver. That's a very small area, so I'm thoroughly impressed with that. Lots of attention to detail on these. There is movement at the top of the boot, by the way. I really do like the knee pads. These look very accurate to what Batista wore at the time. And despite the fact that they have all these wrinkles sculpted in and all this detail, you can still get them to move pretty well. And obviously, I mean, they slide up and down if you want even more movement. But I'm impressed with that a lot. Skin tone looks good. Calf muscles are sculpted well. As well as these massive quadriceps that Batista has. Those look really good. And of course, there's upper quadricep swivel. And it really doesn't look bad when you articulate the leg like that. Sometimes the legs look weird on figures like this, but not in this case. So very impressive. Good detail on the trunks. I like the way they look. One little disappointment here is, I guess on this figure, there's a little bit of sloppiness on the back with the, the deco back here. So again, slight disappointment. But this just looks really good. And so if you want to get him into a running pose, you certainly can. So I believe these are double joint. Yeah, these are double jointed knees. You can get him to kick forward pretty high. It could go maybe a little higher, but I think that's due to the size of the quadriceps. The side kicking motion, eh, I feel like it could be better. I mean, that's, I know Batista is not a side kicking type of guy, but if you wanted to get him in a, a pose like this, I feel like you should be able to do that. And as far as stepping back, he doesn't step back at all uh, because of the hip area here. So slightly disappointed in the hip articulation, but overall, in terms of aesthetics, this lower body is amazing. Let's have a look at the torso now, and there's a lot to be thankful for here. Great accuracy on the navel tattoo. That looks really good. The abdominals have been sculpted very well, as well as the obliques. Get lower torso swiveling here. Also in the upper part of the torso, that looks really good. Being able to do that. I mean, for people who do stop motion and dioramas, that is very, you know, welcomed, I'm sure. And to be able to get him in this kind of pose, that just looks really cool. The pectorals have been sculpted well. I'll talk more about this in a minute, but we get these butterfly joints. So that's really cool. You know, you can get him in this kind of thing. You know, he does this kind of pose throughout his career where he did, you know, kind of the squatting thing with his arms out in front. So if you want to get him in that pose, you can. Now taking a look at the back, this is amazing. That is an astounding amount of detail. I mean, I've never like stared at pictures of Batista's tattoos for hours or anything, but that looks accurate to me. The color, the shape, I mean, that just looks really good. And it even goes down into the joint. So this is certainly collector centric, this figure. So let's have a look at the arms next.
you can get the clipboards into these hands, although I would be very careful with doing that too often. It feels like you would, you know, chip the paint if you did that a lot, like move the clipboards in and out of the gripping hands. Also, I should note here, this one says SmackDown. And the other one says Raw. I mean, again, that's just wonderful attention to detail. And with the open hand, you can just kind of lay the clipboard in his hand like this. And you could have him in that kind of pose. Let's look at the arms now. And these are done extremely well. Good musculature here on the forearm. And if you're wondering, you can get these elbow pads to move. As you can see, the elbow moves very well there. Just outstanding articulation on that. Bicep swivel. There's the tattoo. That appears to be accurate to me. Again, we get this butterfly joint. So there's lots of movement in the arm there. You can get his arm to go up that high. So that's appreciated. So and again, if you're doing stop motion, it looks like he could do punches very easily. You can get his arm to uh, go over his head directly like that. So that's certainly appreciated. Here's a look at the other arm. Good tattooing there. Again, I like that he can do that pose. That just looks really cool. So yeah, just, just an amazing amount of articulation and detail on the arms. Here is the figure with the t-shirt on, and I just like how form-fitting this is. You know, Batista was always looking like he was just ready to burst out of his t-shirts because he was so enormous, and this reflects that, so I'm certainly thankful. So let's look at the three head sculpts now, and this one is pretty good, but this one has some bad paint applications, I believe. The eyes are a little wonky. You can kind of see one's lower than the other and they're staring off into different directions. So I'm certainly glad that I have an option of another head sculpt. I do like the facial hair here. Skin tone looks good. Good attention to detail on the ears. And with this one, I feel like the hair is a little bit more realistic looking on this one than the others. But let's get a look at the others. So if you want a good action pose, this is probably the one you're going to want to go with. Because as you can see, you put him in this kind of position, you know, like screaming, and you can just imagine the fireworks behind him and all the noise. I mean, that just, that looks really outstanding. I like how the eyes have been sculpted here. The mouth looks good. The teeth look good. Even the tongue. All that looks just really outstanding. Again, the skin tone looks good. Yeah, so uh, again, if you want an action shot, uh, I can see where this would be attractive to a lot of collectors. And this is exactly what I wanted out of this figure. <laughs> the emotion here. I mean, this. you look at this figure and you can see the kind of storytelling that a lot of us remember from the, the last part of Batista's career when he became a heel again and started talking, you know, it's all about me. Give me what I want. I mean, the <laughs> again, I just really like this head sculpt. I mean, the eyes look really great here, much better than the other head sculpt. I mean, you can just see the energy in this head sculpt. <laughs> I just like that so much. So just an outstanding job by Mattel there. In terms of articulation, you can get him to look side to side. Uh, you can get him to look up. You can get him to look down. And there is head tilting. And I always appreciate that. Now, I have heard some collectors talk about the Ultimate Edition figures. And they feel like the neck joints are a little fragile, maybe. I don't know that they're fragile, but they do feel a little loose. So I wouldn't stress them out too much. I just want to issue that caveat. I think they've been made that way to give us more options as far as posing goes. But just be careful when you are articulating the heads of these figures. I certainly hope you have enjoyed this review. If so, please like, subscribe, and tell a friend to do the same. 
Stay tuned at the end of the video for some articulation shots, and also remember to catch me on the Multiverse Musings vidcast, available right here on YouTube. And I'll be back to the internet with more pro-wrestling-related content soon. But until we meet again, this has been the Emerald Enthusiast, and thanks for watching.